So, um, welcome for this presentation. Uh, we'll speak today about. Uh, oops, sorry. So, uh, I will introduce optical occurrence tomography to you. Uh, discuss a little about uh, our specialty infrared for OCT. Uh, what are the sensor requirements for this uh, application? And uh, present also some applications in the medical field, but also industrial field. And at the end, have some discussion about uh, a readout electronic that we developed in Xenix and some conclusion about that. So what is uh, OCT? Optical coherence tomography was uh, invented in 91 by uh, someone from the MIT, Professor Fujimoto. And then it got some uh, several uh, awards um, um, and some Nobel Prize also. Uh, there's some research was done also at the MIT about that. Um, Harvard Medical School uh, and some other universities in the world. Um, this application, in fact, uh, this development uh, were used uh, very rapidly on the medical field and now it's moving slowly to the industrial field. So what is ECT? OCT, it's in fact, it's very similar to ultrasound but using uh, light or um, yes, a light to, 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 visu uh, to visualize things. So, uh, you know, um, with that you can provide very uh, high resolution images uh, going through opaque samples. So you go through the surface of the, of the samples. You can go up to six millimeter depth uh, with those techniques. And then after that, with image processing, you generate a 3D view of the objects. Very important is a non-destructive testing. So that means you don't destroy the samples with that. So it's really something which is not invasive and that you can use uh, uh, in line for, for industry, but also for medical applications without destroying uh, or taking any uh, samples on the patient. Uh, in terms of position of this, oops, sorry, uh, you see OCT is uh, between the confocal microscopes, ultrasound technique, and uh, magnetic resonance interferometry. So it is, it is really, it reached the gap between the confocal and the ultrasound uh, technology. So what is uh, low coherence to, uh, interferometry? In fact, there are two techniques, one uh, on base time and another one based on the spectral measurements. The idea is very simple. It's a, it is an interferometer, so you have a broadband uh, source, which can be a super bright LED, for example. You go through a beam splitter, and then the, the, the beam is split in two. One is on the reference uh, reflector, and uh, sorry, um, here on the reference reflector, and the other one is the sample. So recombining back the, the, the signal, you create an interference image here, that give information about the surface of the, of the object on the reflector side. Sorry. Uh. If on the sample you have multiple layers, you have an image of the multiple layers at the end. So this one is a time-based process. Then you have also the spectral interferometry. The difference here is that, sorry. <laughs> Um, you have a fixed mirror instead of a, having a moving mirror. The sample is still there. And after the beam splitter, you have a spectrometer. So you spread the light in order to visualize all the, uh, all the wavelengths. So you see here. And with a, trans, uh, a fast Fourier transform, you convert the wavelength to information about the, the samples in depth. Uh, for that, you need to use uh, of course, the beam splitter and then a diffract, a diffraction systems and also uh, a detector that will uh, measure the, the light coming from, the, from the, the fiber optic. If you have multiple uh, surface or multiple reflector on the path of the light, in fact, the information here on the wavelengths, after that transform to fast Fourier transform, with the fast Fourier transform, give you an information about each level of the, uh, of the sample. Now, what I've done here is just a one point measurement. If you want to go, to, to go on a real sample and make a profile of a sample, you need to add an actual movement in order to 
uh, scan the sample on the line. With that, in fact, with the same technology, you can have a 3D or 2D profile of the image, and if you scan on the other side, you will have a 3D view of the object. Um, there are some limitations about that, of this technology. This is clear that there are some actual resolution. It depends on the, on the, the resolution that you have here on the, on the, on the system. You have uh, also a lateral resolution, of course. Uh, the system has to work rapidly in order, or very quick in order to, have, to keep the resolution of the wavelength here, of the, the image. And on the other hand, you need to scan also, so it takes some time. There is also a, a limitation on that. Uh, why to use infrared instead of visible for the OCT? In fact, the, the infrared can, the shortwave infrared can penetrate in several uh, materials, much more than visible light. Um, so if you use a shortwave infrared from 0.9 to 1.7 or 2.5 um, micrometer, uh, you can go deeply in the material. It can go up to 6 millimeter depth, which is much more than what you can do with visible light. For that, you need to use a special sensor that uh, we in Xenix developed. It's in-gas sensors. Uh, because CMOS or CCD are not sensitive over one micron. So you need to use this kind of uh, sensor to, to detect the light uh, and uh, various wavelengths. Um, yes, the advantage also of uh, in-gas, we can have it as a linear sensor also and as a 2D sensor. They are extremely sensitive and very quick with uh, the correct readout electronic. Um, and it's now becoming one of the key technology for the OCT in the world. So for the infrared uh, um, fast Fourier uh, OCT, it's exactly the same thing as I did before. So you have a broadband light source, okay? You have still the reference mirror and the samples, and you have a line sensor here, which is an in-gas sensor instead of a CCD or CMOS. And the same for the, the, if you use an array instead of a line, you can build very rapidly a, a 2D image or 3D image of the sample. So instead of, of scanning through, you have a, directly the, 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 the cube with the, the information about your sample. Um, so yes, for the full field uh, IROCT, you need, of course, to illuminate the sample with a very broadband uh, light source. It's not a laser. It should be something uh, going from, uh, giving light from, uh, from uh, visible to, uh, to the shortwave infrared. Uh, the advantage of the, the shortwave infrared also is gives you a very short interference length. So that means you can have a very narrow resolution and that acquisition time is, can, has, uh, can be very short. So that means you can have a high-speed process on the image and use that for an uh, inline process. So to perform this, you need good sensors and good readouts. So um, with Xenix, we have developed a range of sensors that are uh, high spectral resolution, so that means we have a, a very large arrays, okay? Uh, for line scan, for example, we go to up to now to 2K, so 2048 uh, uh, pixels, and we have a very small pixel pitch. So that means that you can have a high, uh, high uh, spectral resolution. Uh, with uh, Xenix also, we have the fastest uh, 2D sensors. So we have uh, cameras now going to uh, 1.7 kilohertz in terms of acquisition. So now I will uh, propose you some, uh, some uh, examples on medical imaging. Uh, one that is uh, very famous uh, and very commonly used now, it is uh, um, um, uh, eye structure, so eye visualization. Uh, it is non-invasive because you place the patient in front of the machine, you just light it, uh, and you have directly an image of, uh, of his cornea or of, uh, of his retina. The advantage of that because is because you can do that because we have a millimeter penetration in the eye. Uh, it's very popular now. Uh, we estimate that there are something like 20,000 systems uh, sold 
uh, in the world and uh, something like 2,000 every year. So it, which, it is a lot and it's a very large market. Another example is uh, blood vessel imaging. So you, you use a catheter uh, going inside the, the blood vein and uh, you uh, can detect, for example, uh, artery diseases, uh, yes, uh, melanoma, whatever, uh, on the, on the, in the vessel. Uh, this technique replaced the ultrasound. It's uh, better in terms of resolution. You have a resolution of 10 microns instead of uh, more than 100 microns. Uh, and you have a very clear picture, very nice picture. Another example is uh, dentistry. Uh, you have here um, uh, sorry, a tooth with uh, damage. Okay. Here it's an X-ray view. Here is a visible view, and here is the, the infrared view. So you see that you see clearly the crack, but also the structure inside the teeth. Here is another one, another example. You have a big crack inside the teeth that you can see immediately. immediately. Again, it's a non-destructive testing. Uh, another one also is uh, to, uh, to visualize uh, non-melanoma skin uh, cancer. So you go below the surface of the skin in order to detect uh, what you can have, like, so yes, melanoma, melanoma or uh, disease inside the skin. Um, it's also used for industrial applications. Here you have uh, um, some uh, pressure sensors. So using uh, fast Fourier infrared OCT, you can go through, sorry, you can go through the package at different, uh, several layers and visualize completely the sensors while is in pressure, in fact. So that means you don't have to distract it. Uh, and in fact, it's a measurement you cannot do if, the, the, if you have to cut it and make slice of it. Uh, another one also here is it's used commonly also on uh, um, uh, analysis of surface of uh, materials. Here you have a three-layer three -layer material, plastic, where you have the top surface, you have the bottom surface, and here the, the, the diffusion layer. Uh, and you can clearly see what is the diffusion of the first material bit, uh, in, the, in the second one. So you see clearly that. And again, it's a non-destructive testing. Before that, you had to make cross-section of the material to do this kind of test. Uh, just for fun. Yes, you can do that also on a, a, very, a lot of uh, material. For example, here, an orange peel, that's something that you can do also. So there are still a lot of, uh, uh, of uh, research that has to be done on material that you can use, but it's really booming in, uh, in the industry for, uh, for uh, this kind of technology. Um, you can do, um, you, have, you can have the best uh, sensor in the world for OCT, but uh, if you don't have the correct readout, you will never get the, the result that we, uh, we have here. As we said, we have to, to supply an image with a low, uh, low noise, okay? You need a high dynamic range, and you need also very high speed in order to be able to scan an object uh, very rapidly and uh, make an in, uh, inline process. So, um, with Xenix, we have developed uh, uh, several readouts uh, for our detectors, but also detectors from some other suppliers of uh, sensors uh, that are uh, parameter, um, sorry, uh, they are settables uh, in terms of parameter and that can cover a lot of uh, pixel size or, yes, uh, size of arrays and uh, application demands. So uh, our readouts uh, provide multi-stage uh, signal preprocessing. So you have an I2V converter. Um, that keeps the, the, the in-gas um, photo detector uh, at constant bias. We have also um, a set of uh, integration capacitors that are uh, selectable and uh, that allows, in fact, to adjust the sensitivity of, uh, of the detector on the fly. Uh, after that, you have some CDS stage that eliminates, in fact, the offset uh, variation that you can have on, uh, on the first stage. Then we have a sample hold stage, allowing us to do an uh, um, integrated while reading process. So it increases again the, the speed of the acquisition. 
Uh, and then we have an analog multiplexer and a pad driver that will transfer the data as a notebook. So, conclusion uh, for this. Uh, so, in-gas cameras are really uh, the, the um, let's say, the future or the, yeah, the uh, growing uh, solution for OCT. Um, in the world, <coughs> we, um, we, we, you can provide that uh, with uh, different kinds of sensors in terms of uh, shape and resolution. Uh, you can also improve the, the quality of the measurement by adding some uh, thermoelectric cooling on the sensor in order to reduce the, the noise. Um, these are, those are particularly suited for, uh, for scientific, industrial and medical applications. And uh, you have direct imaging and it can be used also for spectroscopy. Uh, we're using uh, infrared OCT can deliver a um, resolution of one micron, which is very low resolution, and uh, penetrate to up to six millimeter on average. So uh, this is really a, a meaningful analysis tools. And OK, that's, that's uh, the, so the solution for the future. So if you have, this is the end of my presentation. If you have any, any question, please feel free to ask.